And now we are nearing the end of the first season. We are about there. I can't believe it. Like, we are literally on the cusp of this. We have episodes 22, 23, and 24 to get to. We're going to start with 22, of course. And, uh, yeah. It seems we're going spelunking. Yeah, going to go look for all... We're going to... They're going to be playing some Minecraft where they actually go and look for the good shit. You know? I wish that's Hopefully actually... Hopefully it doesn't turn into the descent and they find out that over all this time there have been humans who survived in the caves but turned into Morlocks. horrifying bat demon creatures. The freaking Morlocks from yeah. freaking time, the time machine. Yeah, we're that. I thought you said Murloc. I was going to say... That would be scary, too. That'd be really scary. Oh, yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah. I, it Maybe they will find that. I don't know. But... They're going looking for tungsten, and, uh, you know, no, no, I really... I thought they found... Oh, yeah, they're going to find more tungsten. Yeah, they, they found they found a, 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 a piece of it that Suika found, mm-hmm. but now Chrome, Senku, and, surprisingly, Big Boy Magna, Big Boy Magma, you know, who tried to kill uh, Gen and tried to take over the village and let Ruri die, is now coming with them. It's weird. It's weird. Yeah, Senku should never turn his back to that dude. Nope. No. Nope. He should always be behind that dude. <laughs> exactly. Be like, Magma, you're big and strong. You lead the way. What do you mean? It's like, I don't so trust you. He could very easily just Fair like enough. push him off of a fucking drop in the cave and then come back out and be like, yeah. Yeah, he a, fell. A rock came down and crushed him. He's dead. I'm sorry. Like, yeah, that that would suck. Mm-hmm. But, y- you know, that's one thing. Uh, you know, speaking of my village chief now. Speaking of Minecraft so. earlier, we, we started our own Minecraft server, and um, I really wish in vanilla Minecraft they had other metals other than just basic iron. I know that there's mods out there that, you know, there's like copper, tin, and all these other things, and you got to combine them together to make the different the different uh, types of metal and everything. <coughs> but yeah, I wish see, that I those were replace, available in vanilla. Uh, I would replace, like, the redstone system with copper, like, so you actually have, like, copper wires and stuff. I think that would fit better, too personally but i guess it's just up to them to decide to do that uh, also uh, in galacticraft you actually can do that and you actually have to insulate the wire in, the copper in order to make wire i think it's thrown on the game make it out of copper make an electric chair but it wouldn't look like an electric chair yeah just be like congratulations <laughs> you win then... pull the switch <laughs> next thing <laughs> <laughs> that would be that'd be epic no doubt about it. Yeah, just, know, it'd be funny if you could... Like, hey, look, a massive throne. Let's go sit on it. Exactly. It'd be pretty funny if you could, like, uh, electrify, like, any uh, blocks of certain metals and stuff that conduct, you know, so. I, there, There is a mod in Minecraft called Wireworks where you can. It has to be... It has to be... Uh, it, it has to be... Uh, what's the word? Uh, where electricity can pass through it. It has, um, yes, it has yeah, to be conductor. conductive. Thank you. Yeah. It has to be conductive, and which <clears throat> most metals are, but you know stuff like stone, dirt, stuff that you know you would normally run a ground wire to or something. Oh shit! Yeah. Oops. <clears throat> I have a voice. Let it be heard. Yes, <laughs> you do have a voice. Well, anyway, enough of our ranting and raving about they Minecraft. I just assumed you were sitting there silently the whole time where you have the mask on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 The gimp, oh. the gimp cannot speak. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, they cut out my tongue. Yeah, the gimp is not allowed to speak unless spoken to. Hey, gimp, sing us the blues. That's going to get us uh, <laughs> guideline strike. I hope. I hope <laughs> no, not. I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> Good. But who? What? What uh, movie was? Uh, Pulp Sing- Fiction. What was the movie where the guy, uh, Japanese guy? Was, oh, he had his uh, tongue cut out. <clears throat> was that what Ichi? Was? Um, uh, Ichi the Killer? Some, Maybe. Some movie. Or was it? Oh, he wait, had like no, a no, katana. No. Um, was he being tortured like for most of the movie? Horror movie? Maybe. I can't remember. Some old movie. Yeah, his tongue was it Old Boy? He talked too much. No, no, it wasn't Old Boy. Good. I don't know. I want to say audition, but I haven't actually seen it. So oh God, sure. audition! Oh, a that crazy in, bitch. He was a character in like a really cool movie, and then it was like, oh yeah, he never talks because he talked too much, and they cut his tongue out. I don't know. That could have been like anything from like a sword mask. Anything with the Yakuza in it, because that seems like something the Yakuza would do. I think it was an anime. I think it was a live action Uh, movie. I remember the. I remember that the uh, in the movie Predators, 
the one Yakuza dude was missing a couple fingers, and he said, he said, he said, silence is very important where I come from. One I more, and I would have lost up. my tongue. Yeah, that might have been it. I might have been thinking about the wrong thing. Yeah, Predators. Because I actually enjoyed Predators. I thought it was pretty good. I had my problems with it, but for the most part, it was like pretty good. I didn't like the whole betrayal of the Doctor at the end. That was so stupid. I thought his character was interesting if they would have done him better. Yeah. That's my only thing. Still um, haven't seen that movie. Oh, yeah. That. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, dude. Sorry, Nick. Yeah. yeah. Still good. Still worth it's the, the watch. The downfall of being on a channel where you talk about everything. Sorry. <laughs> you get shit spoiled for you sometimes. Yeah. But anyway, let's get to Dr. Stone. Here we go. Three, two, one. I mean, a friggin' telescope, dude. I mean, that, mm -hmm. <clears throat> it'd yeah, be like... A, that's like the ultimate science instrument besides a microscope. Telescope and microscope is like the two main goals. Well, well, yeah, the microscope is for looking inward at ourselves, and the, uh, and the telescope is for looking outward at is the world around us. And you see, the thing with, the thing with telescopes, uh, when the Dutch first invented them, you know, we already had a decent idea of astrology. Although, back then... We lived in a geocentric world, whereas we thought the Earth was the center of the universe. Yeah. And through trial and error, much later on... Cause, I thought the Arabic invented <clears> the telescope. <throat> now, the Arabic, the Arabic uh, perfected a lot of... Uh, the, they invented astrology. The, Ar yeah. the, the, Arabic, the Arabs and the, and the Hindus invented astrology. Okay. But it was the Dutch who invented the telescope in the 1400s. Okay. Uh, and, by the, and by that... They were able to discover that the Earth was, in fact, not the center of the universe and that everything rotated around the sun through, observe, through observation and trial and error. And then, of course, they also, you know, as technology got better and better with uh, telescopes, they were able to discover the further planets out. For instance, Saturn, uh, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, and then, you know, at the time, Pluto, which now Pluto is no longer a planet. And, I thought uh, they had decided it was again. Huh? I thought they had decided it was again. No, it they it's a, uh, they it is a, a dwarf planet. it is a dwarf planet in the Kuiper Belt, much like an asteroid in the asteroid belt between you know between because <clears throat> this isn't the first time that uh, they've had to do it. A planet. I mean, well, it's for now, a, yes. Rock, so. Well, yeah, but the thing with it is. We've gone through this before with uh, declassifying planets because originally there was other planets, there were what we called other planets in between Mars and Jupiter. You know, the big space between Mars and Jupiter where the asteroid belt is. We were not aware of how many asteroids there truly were out there. Yeah. And we found, I think it was three or four different ones, uh, different uh, uh, things out there that we named, that we called planets. And we named them uh, aptly. There was, uh, I think, Pallas, Ceres, uh, and... I, whenever, there, but, whenever those photos of uh, Pluto actually came uh, about, the, the recent uh, photos... Yeah, the Voyager. Different years ago. Uh, Bayes Mountain Planetarium actually had a Pluto seminar thing, and uh, <clears throat> got to go to the planetarium, and we got to learn all about the discovery and the um, basically the founding of Pluto. And mm -hmm. also, not just that, but how they found any planets. Well, yeah. It's kind of cool because the stars come back in the same positions pretty much every night. But these ones wasn't in the same <coughs> position. They were moving. Yeah. So basically, they they just taking a picture of the exact thing every night. You can see, like, the direction the planet moving will move it back and forth as, the, um, as we go out through the year. But the planets were moving in a pretty much a predictable cycle. Well, yeah. Um, it's pretty cool. And it's like, okay, these guys are rotating on the same form that we are. <laughs> and, and you know there's an interesting thing. Um, Just has a you, lot of observation every damn night. It yeah. It take, take months and years to discover that stuff, you know? Well, well yeah. So I think that's and what kind of makes it cool. There, there was actually a very interesting video that CGP Grey did about the planets. Out of all the planets in, this, in, the, in, our, in our solar system... Um, what planet is closest to Earth? Is it Venus? Is it Mars? Which one is it? Mm, you know, I actually don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Mars. Um, I don't know, though. You'll be surprised to know. I that think it, Venus is closer. You would actually be... I was actually surprised to learn this, too, and so was Gray, uh, so was CGP Grey. 
Uh, the closest planet to the Earth is actually Mercury. Mercury? You know why? Because... Whenever, because whenever the planets are rotating around, they're going at different speeds at different mm-hmm. intervals. Yeah, no, and Mercury, because of its very small orbit, is sense. always yeah. within the is always within a certain vicinity of Earth, uh, more There's so no often than Venus. Side. Exactly. Yeah. Than Venus and Mars. But technically, Venus's orbit is closer to yeah, Earth. No, orbit. Venus's orbit, orbit is closer. Yeah, yeah. But overall, the planet, the planet that is closest to us year round. Yeah. is Mercury. That, that but, makes perfect sense. But you know the thing about Mercury, you know what the thing about Mercury is? It is not only true for planet Earth, but Venus, Mars, Jupiter, yeah. Saturn, yeah. Neptune, and Uranus. Yeah. All of them. All the planets uh because of how yeah. big the because of how big their orbits are, they you know, Mercury is always within a select vicinity whereas all these other planets are, whereas, you know, Neptune is here, mm-hmm. and then Uranus is here. You know, they can yeah, be even this Mercury, far away from each other. Even when Mercury orbits yet, on the other side of the sun, it's still closer to us than the other planet is. Exactly. You know? And it's it basic, you know, basic planetary physics like that astound me, because I would have yeah. never figured that. I'd yeah. have never known that. I'd have just said... That's probably Venus or Mars, yeah, and then all of a su- and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you know, Gray does you know, the math, and I'm, I'm just like, what? A lot what? of that has to do with the graph we saw in school as a kid. Yeah, you know, because that's they a always show the Sun, Mercury, mm-hmm. Venus, Earth. We Mars. always see them lined up. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're, they're not they're that never close. lined up. Yeah. Like, they once very in very rarely of years would they ever line up. Very yeah. rarely are they yeah. lined up. Um, actually, I don't think it's millions of years. According know. according to the Stella that I was looking at in Sherlock Holmes the other day, that was showing the rotations around the sun. I mean, unless they just like sped up, sped it up at a point to like get them back to being aligned. Um, it's not that many before they line back up. I don't think. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, how often do the planets line up? That's here we are. How often do the planets align? Every fifty two hundred years. Okay, yeah, so, so not millions. Not millions, you are but still thousands. Correct. Yeah. You know, that's um, a weird number right there. Every 5,200 years. That's the thing I'm wondering about. Like, we're always talking about, we want to go to Mars. We want to go to Mars, you know, but the moon has been easy because it's always right next to us. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mars can actually be on the other fucking side of the sun from us at different times. Yes. So, so, like, have so I, I, well, what, what I wonder is, like, how much of an interval gap is there between Mars being close enough for us to even think well, about traveling to? Okay, well, let's, let, let I'll show you Gray's video, and it actually, he actually has an animation where he shows... How far away and how close the planets can get to one another. I'll show you, like, uh, when he talks about Earth and Mars. It's actually, uh, let's see, planets. There we are. Which planet is the closest? My very easy method just speeds up naming planets. Every physics classroom has a solar system line like this, or like this. Sorry, Pluto. Looking at the line, <laughs> which planet is closest to. Yeah, so he goes over this and. Uh, Right here. This is the coziest Venus gets to Earth, but each of Earth's inner three planet friends are at one time the farthest and the closest. And Mercury, with his smallest orbit, yeah, it takes a long time for Mars Earth to be super to be close to planet. us. Right there, yep. right there would be the in- the integral time to launch to Mars. Now, in fact, I said twenty thirty three. I think pretty so. Pretty sure. I think that's um, twenty thirty three, and and it's like how long are people going to be stuck there? <clears throat> that's when we're predicted to launch. Once they too. get there, you yes. Know? So. Or well, or they're and, trying to get the launch, and that's why Elon Musk is trying to advance things yeah, so the quickly. Ma- the Mars race, that's why it's called a race, because we're the not the fact that we're the only country and people trying to get to Mars, because there's no other really country trying to get to Mars. Um, we're just trying to race to get the technology and get everything up before that. At least on our planet, because I always assumed it was a race, as in like race and against even other if that countries. Closes, we're still like what, never three that years or five years Earth. of travel to get there. Yeah, yeah. because call. even there, you know, because there's a window of opportunity for us to go. Uh, for instance, let's yeah, let's let's do this here. Orbit makes him never that far. Right away. here would be a good interval because we are on a pro- full approach with Mars. Yeah, and then right here is where we are at the crest, where Mars is straight across from us yeah. at the shortest interval, and then the exit strategy right about there as we are pulling away. Mm-hmm. Now. That's the one thing about Mars. Okay, so it's not as not as long as I thought it would be. Mars is actually closest to Earth about every twenty two months. Okay, so so, yeah. so every twenty two months we can yeah. we can launch it. 
Yeah, so that's not too so bad. about every couple of years. Yeah. So. But damn, if they miss that long. So basically, like, <laughs> like yeah, that's, that too. It's like, what if... Uh, but that means you just got to wait about two years to come back into yeah. into a yeah, good interval. I think that's the whole... Uh, I haven't watched it still with the Martian movie. Mm-hmm. That's an awesome was movie. Was that like the deal with that is he got trapped there and had to wait there for Mars to come back close enough to Earth to leave? Uh, it was that and plus the prep because... Uh, they had to advance their schedule, and the NASA rocketry lab had to pretty much come up with a new a new rocket to where they could launch quick enough, and also you know launch supplies so that he could resupply. Yeah, yeah. and so they're going to need to make a bunch <clears throat> of scientific guesses to make sure everything goes right to get people back, or they're going to end up stuck on Mars, and the Martians going to be like a real uh, thing. <laughs> as of right now, everything is planned on a one way trip. Right now. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, as so of right now. They're wanting to colonize a, it when they go, basically. Uh, it, yeah, pretty much. Uh, it's huh. Well, not a permanent one-way trip, but one-way trip, and then they're going to have to lay down for like five years. Well, um, there it's a settle, it's it's, it's a traditional settlement plan. It's the same yeah. thing when the Europeans attempted to settle here in the United States. Yeah. Or here in the, you know, here in the New World, rather. Because Jamestown was not, like, Jamestown was the first one to truly be successful. It was the first one to truly be successful. Everyone talks about Plymouth Rock, you know, the, you know, it, you know the uh, what were the three ships that uh, that came over uh, uh, and landed at Plymouth Rock? I forget, but I'm not sure. but there were the ones that landed at Jamestown in 1607, and that was the first settlement that really stuck here in the United States. And then, of course, you can't I can't count how many failed one failed attempts that were launched by other countries. For instance, there was one that changed history forever. When the Scots tried to, uh, when the Scot, when the Scottish tried to uh, tried to take land in Panama, and they pretty much got together all of the money that they could, which was about one sixth of their total economy, and they sailed five thousand Scots down to Panama, tried to trade with the locals, couldn't trade anything because everything they brought with them was useless, and about I think it was about three years and about four thousand dead Scottish people later which was, you know, the vast majority of the people they brought, they abandoned the project and went back home. And then, from Scotland's failure, England swooped in and, and financially saved the country and unified, and unified the island into Great Britain. So that's why the Scottish, who won their freedom, you know, the whole William Wallace, Wars, you know, Braveheart, Heart of it, yeah. you know, and Robert the Bruce, you know, won their freedom from the British. A couple hundred years later, the Scots came right back in and were just like, Hey, can we um, can we be a part of the empire again? And there you go, that's how it went. And interesting. Yeah. So. So what are these measurements? I see zero, zero point five eight. Was that ALI? AU. 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 Uh, well, um, let's see. Let's see. What was that? Astronomical AU unit measurement. There we are. Astronomical unit. Yes. Oh, that's right. So get, how, how much is an astronomical unit? A one astronomical unit is ninety-two million miles. The mean distance between Earth and our sun, so basically yeah. eight, eight roughly eight the minutes. average okay. of so, distance. Yeah, usually so point five astronomical units is the closest. I think the closest we get to Mars is approximately one half of an astronomical unit, which will be half of ninety-two million, which would be forty-six million. So, or not 46 million. No, yeah, 46 million. I had that right. So, 46 million miles away is the shortest distance from the Earth to Mars. You know something I've always wondered about? What's that? Um, so, of course, from a perspective of not being brought up on Christianity, this just sounds like a stupid thing to even think about. But uh, there's the whole Tower of Babel story in the Bible. Yes. Where they tried to build a tower to reach God. That made God angry, and therefore... He split the entirety of the world, uh, er, of their population, well, into all the languages to keep them from being able to work together to complete their the tower. Tongues. He can, yeah, he confused yeah. their tongues. He and it was to reach. So, the if that's the kind of thing that angers God, why didn't He do something to stop us from hitting the moon? Well, and what if we do reach Mars and people just start living on Mars? Wouldn't you think that would make God angry? Like, uh, not really. No, so actually, the the, the, the story of so uh, the Tower of Babylon is, or is it actually, just the intent? Like, it's not originally a Bible story, though. Is it not? It's actually it goes. It was originally way further than uh, that. it was originally yeah. an Arabian tale. Yeah, hmm. it was originally just an Arabian like Noah's tale. Noah's Ark was, wasn't an original Bible story either. This That's is an true. Egyptian tale. Yes, 
Yeah. And now, yeah. now the Didn't character, now the character Noah did exist. You know, the character Noah did exist in in the same light that he does in in the Egyptian fable, the original mm-hmm. Egyptian fable. It's his just name, it was his passed name down. Wasn't Noah no, it wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah, I mean, of course, it's <clears throat> all hard to tell. Well, the, the well, and you see the real the real split. Uh, that's why there's the separation of the Old Testament and the New Testament. Which the New Testament, uh, the only thing of the Old Testament I base, you know, I've, I originally based my faith off of is about is the Ten Commandments and everything else in the New Testament, especially everything to do with Christ and the red letters, is more along the lines of how I live of how I've lived my faith because everything because you know. You know, for a religion called Christianity, people don't really listen to what Christ spoke of that much, and that's yeah. what irritates me. And that, that's kind of I mean, like it's literally the, in the name Christ Christianity. Christianity exactly, you know, like, like, and there's no one out there the that focus. actually follows what Christ taught. For instance, Christ never spoke out against homosexuality. Christ never spoke out against against uh, you know wearing fibers of two wearing I, I clothing of two different fibers yeah, he never did that wouldn't phrase it like there's no one out there that follows it no no i'm not saying yeah. that there's no one out there that follows it but all of these because you know that's the whole thing with me, all these like, wannabe bible thumpers who pretend like they yeah. know what's best for everyone else because that's what's in the good book i'm like which book new testament or old because the old testament i don't want to hear it because because pretty much the old testament is a collection of nothing but of all of all these old fables from all these other different regions, mm-hmm. all compiled together into one thing. And don't get me wrong, I know the twelve tribes of Judea. You know that's the oldest. That's the second, actually, second oldest religion in the world. First oldest is Hinduism. And there's books from the Quran in there too. Yes, exactly. Well, I mean, I mean it, it, Leviticus. It's, it's basically an old world mythology put into one. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, yeah. Not Leviticus. All of the I mean. But- Leviticus, Deuteronomy, all of those old school mm-hmm. te- Old Testament books that have incest, that have yeah. all these awful things in it. Well, it, it's, it's like this: if you terrible ask, if you ask how many people really believe uh, uh, King Arthur was such a great king and stuff like that, but really we don't know a damn thing about King Arthur. No, we don't. Now, all we know is fables and the stories and everything. The legends, the, the legends. Yeah. Yes, the legends of King Arthur. Yeah. And also, Lancelot never existed because Lancelot. Came from uh, the story of Lancelot came from France. Yeah, the story of Lancelot came from France. The and when the Ang- and when the Norman conquest happened, and the French brought over all their literature, it combined with the Arthur the Arthurian legend, and then you have Arthur, Lancelot, and Guinevere, the three yep. main characters of that tragedy. We got way off topic. Yes, this. we did. We're but 46 I love in. these topics. So. I do too. I do too. <laughs> I, I I I can't stop myself. We can't we can't shut the fuck we up. We just can't stop it. No, we can't. So anyway, everybody, uh, that's going to do it. This was Dr. Stone, episode 22. Hope you all enjoyed it. And if you want to see more, you know what to do. Check out our Patreon. Check out our Discord. Leave a subscribe on the channel. Oh, I just like. want to insert so that people don't like insult me in the comments over this. I know you're not going to listen. You already typed your angry comment. But no, I don't believe that all languages came from God, just splitting all the languages up. Like so, well, it's yeah. obvious that uh, there are languages that we can trace the origins of where they started, and they started because people made them. Yes. So I know I realize that. So. All right. Well, yeah, get off me. Anyway, that's gonna do it, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time, signing off. I'm Nate. I'm Nick, and I'm Jacob, and we'll see you in the next. And everybody, peace out.